Southeast group lament collapse of security architecture in eastern region. And brain drain to heat universities as lecturers relocate overseas. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. Condemning the violent assassination attempt on the person of Senator representing Anambra South Senatorial Zone at the National Assembly, Senator Ifayuba, civil rights body, the Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, has blamed security agencies or the strategy in the Southeast for the success of the dastardly act. Now, National Coordinator of the Rights Group, Comrade Emmanuel Mubiko, also said in a statement yesterday that no reason could be ruled out, including assassination. The Anambra State Police Command uh, confirmed that five persons, including two policemen and three civilians, were killed when gunmen attacked the convoy of the senator representing Anambra South, Ifayuba, on Sunday. Recall that Chike Akunili, the husband of late boss of the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDAC, Dora Akunili, was murdered by gunmen in Anambra. Gunmen earlier this year also attacked the Anambra state governor's local government area headquarters and set it on fire. Now, to joining us to discuss and make sense of this is Openabo Inko Tara, he's a civil rights advocate, and Charles Otu, who is a political analyst. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Good evening, Miriam, and uh, good evening, Nigerians. Good evening. Thank you for having me, Miriam. Thank you for joining us. I'll start with you, Charles, because you're from the Southeast. Um, um, one of the things that are also, you know, was not mentioned, uh, you know, when we started was the fact that an attempt had also been made on the now governor of Anambra State before his elections. Now, we also know how that went. Thank God he survived it. Um, I think the, the biggest question in everybody's mind is, uh, what's really going on in Anambra? Thank you very much. The, uh, to start with, the attempt on uh, Soludo, Fukuma Soludo when he was aspiring to govern Anambra, uh, the, that attempt was still within the Anambra South. That is where Soludo comes from, where Ifanyuba comes from, where Newi is part of the local government, uh, local government that makes up uh, Anambra South, uh, particularly Anambra as it, it is configured presently, the southern part of the state has witnessed more of this uh, insecurity. We recall that um, uh, during the election of uh, Soludo, for instance, Ihiala, which is uh, one of the local governments within the southern uh, geopolitical zone in that state, uh, came under heavy security uh, you know, heavy insecurity that threatened the election and led to a rerun election being conducted in the state uh, after other local governments uh, had been turned in. So that particular part of the state, particularly Anambra South, has been a hotbed of insecurity, beginning from Agrata down to Newe, up to uh, uh, virtually, practically every part of the local government within the Anambra South has faced this monumental uh, yeah, incidents of insecurity. And uh, it is it's really a concern because this is a state that had been hitherto very peaceful before now. Uh, this is a state that, uh, you know, before the incident of uh, uh, Dora Kulore's uh, husband, Shika Kulore, before the incident of his uh, assassination, uh, the state had been largely peaceful. And uh, all of a sudden, the incidents in Anambra, you know, gives, like uh, Biako Juku painted it, it gives a shocking, uh, uh, shocking revelation about the depth of insecurity and what I will call the level of failure of intelligence gathering of the various security apparatchik in the state. You, you don't have a state, for instance, where there is a, seven, a, a sitting governor, 21 local governments in all, uh, almost close knit. It's not like it's, uh, it has a last vast, a large vast area of uh, land that is uh, uninhabited. Like you know, some states like Kogi, for instance, like Niger and all of that, where you can say, okay, this, so it's easier if the security agencies do their job. 
It's easier, for instance, for intelligence reports to expose some of this. Recall that they were on their way from, they were on their way to Newi, and this is what happened between uh, Enugu, the access between Enugu and the Fonimo. If you watch the incident, the trend of the Wele of the senator's uh, uh, convoy, you, you would have noticed that it wasn't something that was just spontaneously done. It was planned, it was masterfully hashed, and perfectly, almost perfectly executed. Uh, like the aide, uh, the media aide said when he spoke yesterday, and even the senator himself, it was all thanks to the bulletproof vehicle he was riding on. But then his aides were not that lucky. So the, the level of intelligence gathering, particularly in that state by security agencies, I, 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 I think should be questioned, should be called to question. Because uh, the roads leading to these areas are clear roads. I, 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 I live in Oka, I live in Oka. I do my media business in Oka, and I move around the state. I go to Agbata almost every other time. And if you watch, you will see that it is not something that, it is not an ambush that if there was intelligent gathering that couldn't have been busted. But uh, I've watched with uh, a trepidation the level of, um, would I say, laziness or lack of intelligence gathering among, or even cooperation among the various security agencies in the state. It's almost like... Um, um, it's something the average Anambra uh, citizen will have to live with. That is downright fear. So we are talking about Sinetuba because it's time to back today. Remember, too, that sometime uh, a few months ago, Mary Ann, that uh, armed, uh, armed gunmen invaded a burial and killed people who came to mourn well, with a diseased family. And there have been so much other pockets of terrible insecurity within that state that calls to question, really, the level of intelligence gathering among security agencies in that state. And uh, I think uh, Governor Soludo has so much to worry about. There is so much task, there is so much uh, task to be given, there is so much order, there is so much work hmm. before the security agencies in that state. Mr. Otu, it's like you read my mind, but let me go to Opuna. But many have said that this is political. Uh, some others have said nothing should be ruled out. Um, a group of persons have said that... Um, this incident was calculated, it was so planned, it was strategic, and it could be political detractors that are after him. So let's examine the political, uh, or the politician, Anduba. I mean, he's not in the running for anything right now. He's, of course, uh, a senator representing his state. Um, what could be that political undertone that would, um, you know, warrant this kind of dastardly act? Well, uh, it, it, it could be, yes, I just pray that uh, the forthcoming campaigns are not going to be sanguinarian in nature. It could be as a result of so many issues. It could be polycosa. It might be politics. It might be business, because he's a businessman. It might be politics. It might be business. It might be any other thing. For now, we cannot say with all... Uh, form of uh, certainty what must have precipitated the action, what must have led to that for now, because it's just in the realm of conjecture. But it is very sad that the insecurity in this country has assumed apocalyptic dimension. Nigerians in general, it's sad that today we are talking of the Southeast, but Nigerians in general are paralyzed with dread. And that is as a result for three um, reasons. You know, the giant triplets of nepotism, um, complicity, and uh, marginalization. If you talk of the, the not, for example, I'm, I'm going to explain them. If you talk of the not, for example, when you talk of uh, nepotism and complicity, you know, when this whole thing started in the not, the federal government initially dismissed it as a uh, foreigner, the Nigerian, who came in to perpetrate whatever that sadly had been perpetrated. And in that indicting itself, because you are you order to protect life and property and the territorial integrity of the nation. So Nigerians are not interested in where the perpetrators came from. Your job is to protect the country. Later, they said, oh, these are uh, Boko Haram people who are resident in the country and all sorts of stories. We had all kinds of stories. 
Now, why am I saying it's a question of nepotism? Eventually, they said the truth, it was William, um, William Winston Churchill who said, truth is incontrovertible. Panic may deride it, malice may distort it, ignorance may go. But here yeah, it is. Later, the same Buhari who said that these were Nigerians and so on was the same Buhari who built a railway to Niger. And what did he say when he was questioned? He said, his relatives are there. I'm talking of the nepotism there. So there is that unwillingness to address this issue. Then if you talk of complicity, yes. Now you look at the former service chiefs who were rewarded with ambassadorial appointment for their office and trial in office. They are treated as their successor came on board and said all the money voted for the purchase of arms and coke could not be accounted for. The NSA went ahead to corroborate that story. What happened? Look at the former inspector of police that was directed to go to Bruno State. I'll come to the northeast, to the southeast, sorry. That was directed to go to Bruno State. The day Mr. President went to Bruno State, I was told that he never spent a night in Bruno State. What, did, what was his response? Don't worry, I'll go back to find out what. And the man retired. He was not questioned. Nigerians never had anything about it. That is the complicity I'm talking about. Then if you go to the southeast, it is extremely sad. But what is the genesis of all this? I'm not ruling out politics. I'm not ruling out uh, uh, business or anything. But the truth about it is that the situation in the South is, is simply a thunder in the words of Martin Luther King of disinherited masses, the marginalization that took place there. Of course, it was infiltrated by criminals. Otherwise, the situation in the South is, was and the inflammatory statement made by Mr. President, when he said the South is, is just a dot, that was quite highly provocative. And he also laid more burden on their members by telling them that they to remember the Civil War, what happened to them. Well, that will be a rehash of what happened to them in the Civil War. But could, could that war. not have been the President, and I'm not in any way holding brief no, for the no. President, could that not it's have been a way of the President way. talking tough? Because we've seen him talk tough. When it comes to issues of insecurity, whether it be the northeast, in the northwest, even in the oh, southeast. My dear, my dear. Oh, I just talk of complicity, I talk of the positive also. All we hear is high blood pressure of distressing presence and a major of positive performance. You have what I also refer to as a change discrimination and manacle segregation. You in the north, when this is gone in the north, they treat them with cheap gloves. But when it is in the south in the north, in the southeast. What did they do? Or even in the south side, look at what that food did. In the south, they bombed the whole place. That is what goes on. So nobody is interested anymore in what the president says. They're just marching past uh, that not severely. Nothing comes out of it. But the truth about it is that yes, the fight, the struggle in the south is have been infiltrated by criminals. No doubt about it. But let us also look at the genesis of all this. I can tell you now that if Andrew Bar, if a northerner of Andrew Bar's caliber has been attacked. They would have sent the bomb there. The whole way to Dubai would raise that, that, that community down. That is what they would have done. But let us look at the complicity and the election of duty on the part of the security of places, as my brother rightly said. You remember when Buhari went to the prisons, Kujia, was it Kujia prisons also in, in Abuja, after the jailbreak, and accused the security of, in, in, the security of prisons of incompetence. They came out. And what did they say? It was accepted by the Deputy Speaker of the Federal Congress, Savvy, not former. He said the DSS, the President, had 42, 42 information uh, uh, on, on the attack before it took place. Mm -hmm. What did the President do? Nothing. The actual has not come out to deny that, to, 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 to contradict that. And that is the conclusion I'm talking about. 32 intelligence reports. And the president act, did not act. That goes down, and so at times you might not necessarily blame even the security of prisons. Because they take instruction from the president. They take instruction either directly or indirectly. When I mean directly or indirectly, the men at the, at the, at the lower cadre take instruction from their board. Who eventually takes instruction from the president? He is the commander in chief. And the president had this intelligence report. He had it. They are not saying Mr. A. They said the president had the intelligence report. He did not act. Whether he went ahead to deceive Nigeria, I think he was going to deceive Nigeria, 
And in the spirit of the to court that they are not going to disclose this to Nigeria, he went ahead to blame the security of Britain. And when they came out to say, no, we gave this intelligence for 42, he kept quiet. So what are we talking about? We have, it is so sad that we have a president that has turned uh, the other way while the nation bombed. Okay. And that is the problem we have in this country. The security of Britain too are no longer encouraged. Okay. They're no longer encouraged. Mm -hmm. Okay, look at what happened when we could have it. How many military formations were there? No life was lost, apart from that uh, a civil defense man who felt he was a Nigerian was trying to be patriotic. No life was lost. Okay. Not one. And how will you release over 300, 400 persons who move in, release prisoners, and nobody was caught for two, for three, four hours? There is some level of complicity. But in the okay. case of Andrew, but like I, like I rightly said, in the case of Obama, you cannot rule out business. Okay. You cannot rule out politics. That's the truth. Until okay. they come up with the report, it is still in the realm of conjecture. But then, this, this, most of these boys are perpetrated this crime. If they are assassins, then it's a different scenario altogether. All right. Because if they are probably they went for business, probably is involved in one business deal or the other, or probably they, they are afraid of his political crowd, and so they went. But if they are not assassins, then it is just a matter of, it's just sad that these criminals have infiltrated the iPhone struggle and uh, I said when you have the ESNB, most times of course they deny most of these things. But it means these criminals have infiltrated that struggle. And that is what you have. For every legitimate struggle, of course you have people that will infiltrate. All it's right. a natural <laughs> thing that you want. And so it is incumbent upon the security authorities to address the situation and contain it. That is why they are paid in taxpayers money. All right. Let me come back to you, um, Charles. Obanabo said a lot about complicity, um, government, you know, turning a blind eye and deaf ear. But if everything he said and any is anything to go by, because he's also said that um, the, the Southeast, he's, in not so many words, um, is giving the short end of the stick over and over again. But then there's a huge amount of security presence in the north, uh, in the southeast, we've seen so many soldiers. I mean, this, we've seen formations upon formations. You know, crocodile smile. I'm, I mean, the list is endless. How come all of these security agents that have been sent to the southeast are unable to quell the situation? Again, what are the governors? Because I remember when the governors in the southeast decided that they were going to have a security forum, they had a tea party, if you ask me. But what, what's been the outcome of that tea party? Yeah, excuse me. Th th thank you very much. Hello? I can hear you. OK, thank you very much, Marianne. Uh, you, you see, when you talk about the, the uh, of course, uh, President Brian started with Operation Python Dance. That was uh, about uh, three, four years ago. And then um, here we are again, still talking about security. It's not, it's not in the declaration of um, operations, as it were. It is in the, like Openabot rightly noted, the ability of the security outfits to understand, gather intelligence, and like people who are paid with taxpayers' money, move in. We understand there are chains of commands, actually, but uh, the, 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 the commissioner of police in a state, for instance, uh, is the chief uh, implementing officer of the governor's uh, directives on security, particularly internal security as it concerns the state, uh, in, this, in this case, Anambra. Now, if you look at it, you see that it is not as though there have not been programs. It's not as though these people are not there on the roads. The soldiers, the indolency of the soldiers, in fact, the military and the other security apparatchik that are operating in the Southeast have even been reduced now as we speak to taking money from KK operators. That's, they take money, they give change just like the police does. It is that bad that we have the physical availability of these officers on duty and all they do is to give a reactive, not a proactive approach to intelligence, not a proactive approach to uh, securing the nation, which is their primary responsibility. Now, if, if you look at it holistically, you see that uh, Anambra, just like other parts of the Southeast, is degenerating to the point that 
Even a military formation along the highway, for instance, as it happened in Okibwe, for instance, just a few weeks ago, and it's been happening, it's been reoccurring in that axis of uh, the Enugu Portacot Expressway. There have been a kidnap syndicate that has been kidnapping people, taking them into the bush, perpetrating a manner of crimes in Ihube, between Ihube and the uh, Abia axis, that's between Ihube and Leru. And it is not as if they do this in the night, they do it in the daytime. They have the effrontery to attack a military formation at that Ube junction, burnt a military van till date, till date. We don't know the outcome of that investigation. We don't, nobody is feeling anybody back. The uh, two division in Enugu, for instance, has never called a diligent press conference to say, oh, based on what is happening in the South East, this is what we found out, this is um, what we've done. And there is high level of unaccountability across board. You talked about a Bubago. A Bubago was formed by the government, uh, led by the champion by the governor of Ebony. The aim of that Ebubago has long been defeated because all they do now, even in Imo state where they are seem to be operating, both Ebony and Imo, all they do is to harass political opponents. That's all. Okay. So the fate... They have no business with the butchies. They have no ambush anywhere to lay. They have never caught a full and headsman or anybody with arms anywhere except harassing political opponents. It's happening in Ebony. It's happening in Nemo. These are the two states where Ebubago had featured and all okay. the stories we've had about them are not fine stories of Unfortunately, the gentlemen, situation. our time is almost up. I wish that we could continue this conversation, but of course, we'll keep our eye on this story as it unfolds. I want to say thank you, Punaboyin Kotaria, uh, Charles Otu. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. All right. Thank you. When we get back, uh, we will be discussing the ASU strike as mass relocation of lecturers out of the country keeps on. We'll be right back after this break.